Hey everybody, so three years ago I stood in the same spot and I told you I had no idea what I was doing with this water garden. I'm gonna try my hand at water gardening and I have never tried this before. So and now I know like a little bit more. So much of what I've learned over the years has actually come from water gardening forums and even the comments of my videos. There are very enthusiastic um, and very knowledgeable water gardening people out there who I've been learning from. Um, but it's been enjoyable to learn a different aspect of water gardening. So um, this is just a stock tank pond here in my vegetable garden. I think it's 150 gallons. It's four feet in diameter. I just bought it from a farm supply store, had it delivered, and I fill it up. I empty it in winter, but I fill it up every spring. I add some black pond dye to it to darken the water a little bit. I've only added it once this year. Um, and it's still looking still looking good. Um, you need like a drop of pond dye. It goes a little bit goes a long way. I bought a quart sized uh, container of pond dye well three years ago now and I've used like maybe an inch of it off the bottle. It's basically still full. Um, so one of the things that I learned is that um, there's sort of a delicate balance that has to happen in ponds because you can get a lot of scum in them. You can end up with them getting stinky. Your plants might not, might not grow well. Um, so I feel like I've landed in a pretty good place here this year. So I want to start this year with this amazing plant. So for the first time this year, I'm growing lotus. Now I did a video earlier this year on planting a lotus, which was not actually this lotus. Um, I planted a second lotus uh, for the um, for the patio. Um, but the method of planting is exactly the same way. I planted this in a probably an 18 inch uh, container that I filled the holes on. And it's probably, I'm just trying to check here. The soil level is probably six inches below the, below the water here. I've got it sitting up on um, either on a pot or a cinder block or something. I can't remember which. And this is a large lotus. So it's filling up this pot quite a bit and you can see how beautiful it's looking. Now, um, this was the first flower that bloomed and I'll have to show you pictures of it because the flower only lasted about three days, but it was stunning while it lasted. And now we've got this gorgeous lotus pod left here, which is almost as good. As you can tell, we've got three big buds here and I thought I saw another bud coming somewhere else, but maybe I may, oh yeah, there is one more bud hiding underneath here and hopefully more buds will continue to come. Um, I don't do anything to treat this except I have been fertilizing it. I use pond fertilizer tabs with, um, and apparently it's very important that they're with humates. I don't exactly know yet why that's so important, but I know enough to know that that's important. And I fertilize probably every two to three weeks. And I think that's why I've got as many flowers as I have is because I am fertilizing quite a bit. The other plant I have in here is this, um, Basically, it's a, a water oxalis. It's a water four-leaf clover um, that I also have potted. This one's in a fabric pot um, that sits up again uh, just above the surface of the water. And this is obviously doing quite happy. And I actually do stick a fertilizer tab in that um, every so often, not nearly as often. And then the only other plant that I have in here is one called hornwort. Let's see if a bit has... This is a, this is a little bit of it. You can just see it's just this sort of hairy little guy. And uh, I've got this pegged down to the bottom just with a rock on top of it, but it grows up to the surface here. Uh, that's important because what hornwort does in a water garden is it absorbs um, all sorts of excess chemicals that can be in the water. So it helps balance out your water. Now, number one question I have been asked over the years is how do you keep this from becoming a mosquito breeding ground. In the past, I've done two things. I've used a solar fountain, uh, just a cheap one from Amazon, and, um, and that, you know, to keep the water moving a little bit. I have no electricity near this garden, so I can't run anything that's electric here. And any sort of pumps that you have typically need a pretty big solar panel, um, which would it would take a bit of doing to make that work. I'd have to run it out of the garden and run wires from that into here. So I have no electricity of any kind here. So a little solar fountain, which did move the water around. It was kind of fun to have in there. 
Um, but I didn't do that this year because water lilies really prefer still water. So I didn't want to mess that up. Obviously, this is sort of the star of the show. So uh, this year I did what people have been telling me to do for years, which is add fish. I've always been reluctant to add fish because I was afraid that uh, it would draw in a lot of predators. I was afraid of raccoons getting in here and various birds. Um, honestly, it's not been an issue. We had one Cooper's hawk. Once we saw Cooper's hawk kind of perched on the edge here, um, plucking some off. Um, but that was it. Um, he doesn't seem to be around much. And I think it's because I bought very inexpensive, very small fish. I just went to the fish store, to the pet store, and I got feeder fish. I've got three varieties in here. I messed up a little bit because the, when I went back for more, because um, really this is a big enough tank that it can hold quite a few of these small fish. I went back for more and I bought guppies. Um, and what I didn't know and what many of you know and have told me is that uh, guppies are little breeding machines. So I went away for a week and when I came back to check on the fish, um, they were getting smaller and I thought, well, how would that be that fish are getting smaller? Well, those would be the babies. So there's probably a fairly big population of fish in here right now. I have only found about, about five dead ones floating on the surface. So that's, that's pretty good. They've all been the, the ones that are called rosies, kind of maybe two inches long and sort of orangish colored ones. Um, those are the only dead ones I've found. That's not to say others haven't died that I haven't seen, but those are the only ones that I've pulled out, which is pretty good because I put in, well, a lot more than that. Um, so the fish have been fun and the water has never been cleaner. This water, I haven't cleaned it. I haven't had to skim it. Um, the tank doesn't feel super scummy on the side. So they're taking care of some of the LJ too. Um, so I'm totally sold on the fish thing now. Not only that, it's also really fun. I don't know, they're just silly little fish, but I do enjoy kind of looking for them and checking on them and whatever. But the question is, what do you do with them at the end of the year? Which is why I've never had fish before, because I don't have any interest in bringing fish inside uh, for, the, for the winter. This pond gets fully emptied, um, in part because I'm, I'm fairly certain it would just freeze solid here. It's not that deep and not that big, but also because it's really helpful for cleanup in winter for me to roll this out of the way so that we can actually, because we've actually made our paths wide enough that we can pull the, um, the, tra the garden tractor with the trailer on it right through here, um, or it's obviously wide enough for a wheelbarrow, but it's kind of nice to push this over to the side to just clear this up so that it's very easy to clean this out and keep this clean in winter. So that's what we do. We've been emptying it every year. Um, so this year, the fish, my plan is to put them up on like Facebook Marketplace, or I will talk to the pet store first and see if they want them back. My guess is that they won't. Um, otherwise, I will put them on Facebook Marketplace and see if anyone wants them as feeder fish or to do whatever they want with. But um, what I will not do in any way, shape or form is release them into the wild. That's a really, really bad thing to do. So um, hopefully I can just find uh, somewhere where they'll be put to some sort of use. As far as what to do with the plants in winter, um, you can overwinter lotus roots out of the water um, as tubers. So I'm going to do some research on how to do that and give that a shot. To be honest with you, if it doesn't work, I'm happy enough with how this plant is performing that if this was only an annual, I'd be okay with it. I think this was, I ordered this load at both loses from a place called Bergen Water Gardens online. I think this one was like $35. It was not cheap, um, but I'm, I'd spend that again. To me, that's, that's okay to spend on a plant for a year. I will try to overwinter it though, just to see how that goes and give that a shot. Uh, this little four leaf clover guy is, is pretty tough. And sometimes you can pull water plants out in their pots and you can actually um, bury them and like heal them into the garden. Um, so I might try that. But again, this was like, this was probably a $3 plant or $5 plant. So um, it's honestly, you pay way more for shipping for these if you have to order online, if you can't find them locally. And then the hornwort will not, um, the hornwort I will have to buy new next year. So that'll just go in the compost pile. And that's basically the care and feeding of my water garden. Um, when we built this vegetable garden, I knew I wanted a centerpiece here. 
And the two thoughts I had were either like a little, a little patio table, you know, like a little table to sit down in. Um, although I know how many benches I have around my garden and I know how often I sit in them, which is rarely, um, or a little water garden thing. And this has been so, this is just my place to play. I have no expectations because I'm an inexperienced, I'm inexperienced at water gardens. I have no expectations for what this should be. So anything that happens is a success for me and anything else is just figuring, well, I'm new to this. So I'm just learning and figuring it out. Uh, so that is a very freeing fe feeling in a garden to have zero expectations for what should be happening in it. So you can do what I'm, everything I'm doing here in a much smaller form with just like a really big uh, bowl on a patio. You can certainly go bigger than this. Many people do. I mean, if I had a bigger area, I would definitely get a bigger stock tank. I did nothing to treat this stock tank, by the way. Um, I know there's some, I've read a lot about there being issues with galvanized tanks. Um, I've never had a problem with it. It's not, the fish are doing fine in it. And... Um, the plants are doing fine in it so it's never been an issue for me so I this is just exactly this tank is exactly how it arrived to me except I pulled the sticker off the side of it and that's about it okay so I hope if you had some questions about this because a lot of people do um, I hope you found this helpful and you know I would say this is this to me if there's a lesson for me from this garden it's to just try new things um, because especially if there's no expectation for having any success with it um, everything is a success and it's so much fun I this garden this little stock tank pond brings me so much joy and I have so much fun playing with it and I have so much fun um, trying out these new plants that to me I mean if you had asked told me a decade ago that I could have grown a water lotus in my garden I would have thought you were nuts I literally had no idea you could even do that here in zone 5 in the Midwest all right, so that's it from here. I hope you guys have a great day in your garden and maybe try something new in your garden today. See you soon.